Hello everyone, my name is Tamara de Lagla from the Psychobiology Laboratory of the University of Seville and I am here to present one of our works, the Functional Areas for Processing Painful Stimuli in the Teleostelencephalic Pallium, an Optical Recording and Electrical Microstimulation Study, funded by the Ministerio de Universidades from Spanish Government. Before starting, I Starting, I want to remind that a nociceptive stimulus is a potentially painful one that is sensed by the nociceptive system and further processing in brain areas devoted to both emotional and discriminative aspects uh, and it's a, their interaction give rise, give rise to, uh, is thought to give rise to, the, to pain. Increasing evidence shows that teleost fish possess a nociceptive, nociceptive system and also the sending inhibition comprising shared molecular mechanisms and also pathways uh, at spinal and supraspinal level similar to those of mammals. But little attention has been paid to the role of the fish telencephalon, leading to a widespread ID that fish responses to nociceptive stimuli are mediated by simple reflexive circuits at spinal level. Since pain is thought to be the result of the processing of the nociceptive stimuli in a complex cortical-like manner, the issue of telest fish being able to experience pain is still debated. Specifically, it's debated whether the fish brain is able of a complex processing in both areas devoted to emotional and discriminative aspects. In the last years, the use of teleost fish in neuroscience has grown importantly. The animal mother with which we work is the Cariaceus auratus or common goldfish. Uh, it is a uh, it is a, this species is specially convenient for the, stu the study of both the fish brain and its behavior for many reasons. On one hand, unlike other fish used in research, such as zebra fish, goldfish are highly cooperative and they get used to be handled with ease. On the other hand, the brain is big enough to, easily to be easily manipulated, that is to perform lesions or implant electrodes or to acquire optical recordings images in detail. The surgery is easy to perform since the brain is at a safe, safe distance from the cranium. When we perform a craniotomy, an important part of the fish telencephalic pallium is exposed. Broadly speaking, the pallium equals to the cortex. Here we can see a schematic representation. This is the rostral part and the caudal part of the telencephalic pallium and this area is called is what we know as DM. So our first experiment addresses the question of which of those pallial areas are more co more consistently active during the presentation of potentially painful stimuli. That is what happens in the fish telencephalic pallium during the presentation of a potentially potentially painful stimuli. To this end, we recorded the brain activity elicited by a potential painful stimuli, in this case an electric somatic electric shock, and we did so with the technique of voltage sensitive dye imaging. For those who don't know it, what we do is to stain the neural tissue with a fluorescent that binds to the cell membranes and that, when activated by a light of a certain frequency band, is able to um, emit an amount of fluorescent light in response to the changes in the volt in the in voltage, therefore transducing the changes in the membrane potential into optical signals that are recorded by an optical um, voltage sensitive dye equipment and that are later shown as pseudo color maps in the computer. It's similar to calcium imaging, but reflecting more directly the changes in the membrane potential rather than events related with the depolarization. Here we can see the aspects and note that respect to the previous slide, the brain is upside down, so this is the rostral part and this equi equi uh, corresponds to the more uh, caudal part. 
So here we can see in pseudo color maps the difference in fluorescent fluorescence. That's what uh, that's um, proportional to the voltage and uh, the change in voltage, and we see the response of four different brains. Mm. Here, what we see is the average time series, and we can see uh, that we have different blobs of activity, mainly in the DM regions, also, although we have some blobs outside. To analyze this result, what we did is to extract one measure uh, for each pixel, that was the onset amplitude, and that is the mean activity of an initial time window for each pixel. So we got these measure maps. We normalized among conditions. And we got the maps uh, for each of the, we did so with all the trials. So we got a measure map for each of the stimulus pre presentation trials, but we did the same with the blank control condition in which no stimulus was presented. Then we perform a, a, to each pixel a non-parametric permutation test that allows us to test the significance of each pixel activity. The result of the test is shown as a p-map as a p-map or map of p-values. So the results of the the results uh, of this analysis in the four brains uh, confirms well here is the pmap for each uh, for each fish and it confirms that the most consistently activated pixels belong to two differentiated areas both in the sub, -reg sub regions in the area of DM what we will call caudal DM and rostral DM so the aim of the second experiment was to further characterize the differential function of goldfish RDM and caudal uh, DM subregions and to test whether the stimulation of either or both regions could elicit an emotional adversive state capable of inducing a conditioned emo emotional response. To this end, a classical differential conditioning procedure was used in a classical condition procedure, a neutral stimulus, in this case a sound of a certain frequency, was pair, is paired with an unconditional stimulus. In the, that was an, uh, an electrical shock. Well, we will call. We will. I will tell you about this later. But since it was a discriminative task, we had two different sounds of 1,500 uh, hertz. Uh, that were used as CS plus, that is, was paired, or a CS minus, that is, that is, it was not paired with anything. Mm, the CS, uh, what was the CS plus and CS minus was not always the same frequency, but uh, which frequency was used uh, was counterbalanced in the different groups. The response, I will tell later about the unconditioned stimulus, but the response we measure was the conditioned bradycardia, that's a proxy for aversive emotional learning widely used in mammals. The unconditional stimulus um, was different in each of the three groups. In a somatic group, it consisted on an electric direct intradermal shock in the body, in the fish body. In the other two groups, um, instead of a shock in the body, we stimulated either rostral DM or caudal DM with a chronically implanted microelectrode. So, micro brain microstimulation was used as an US. Here we have a microscope detail of the electrodes that we checked before using. They were self-made in the lab. And here's detail of the surgery. Uh, after the surgery, we waited for two days while the electrode was uh, implanted and fixed. And after the surgery, we waited for two days while the cranium was closed. And then we waited for two days before training in the condition task. After training, 
the animal was sacrificed and the brains processed for histological confirmation of the electrode placement. Here we see an example of the histology with a lesion in the caudal part of uh, DM. Uh, this is a sagittal view, so this is um, one slice of the brain. In the results, here we have the results of the somatic group. This is the typical response to the CS. Um, when listening to the tone, the fish responded with an emotional response. Uh, here, well, it's not... It, uh, the legend is, lo is uh, lost, but this is the CS plus and this is the CS minus. As we can see before the training, we did the habituation with an uh, did an habituation phase uh, in which we presented both uh, both sounds without pairing. So there was no to test that there was no uh, differential response. Uh, in the beginning and then during the training test the CS plus was paired and we can see here what we see is blocks the mean uh, response of blocks of 15 trials and as we can see um, during the training the response to the CS plus um, uh, gets higher and higher as opposed to the CS minus um, Yes, I said this is uh, the mean of bin. No, uh, we bin the blocks in of fifteen trials. Um, so this is what we expect from an adversive, an already known adversive US such an electric shock. Let's see what happens with the microstimulation groups. Well, we can see that this not happens in the caudal DM group where there is not they, it doesn't reach a significant learning um, level. The statistics says there is no difference. Oops, this should be here. Uh, sorry. But uh, the statistics says that there is no difference between stimuli. So this is not an aversive um, stimulus capable of inducing an emotional response and this is just the contrary that happens with rostral DM where we can see the learning is comparable and even more robust than an electric shock on the body here we can see the results the data collapsed in a single plot uh, this is the mean of the last block of 15 trials and mm, yeah we see the response to the CS plus and the CS minus in the last block and we see that an intracerebral microstimulation in rostral DM but not caudal DM uh, region is as aversive as a somatic shock in a conditional par conditioning paradigm So moving to the discussion, previous results show a role for caudal DM in discriminative aspects of somatosensory stimulus, specifically a work from Paco Caña from my lab, my lab showed that stimulation of different body regions activates different areas uh, and that those areas are arranged in a, som in a somatotopic manner. On the other hand, other works also show a relationship of rostral DM, well, of DM with emotional aspects. The lesion of DM, of the whole one, affects the retention of an, uh, of an avoidance response in a place, place, in place conditioning procedures or paradigms and impeding the conditioned place avoidance and specifically Russell DM lesion animals, um, pr uh, the lesion of uh, Russell DM produced a drop in the condition bradycardia in a classical condition pro uh, procedure as compared to pre lesion levels of already trained animals uh, of caudal lesions or to sham controls. So one implication of these results is that DM uh, is not a single functional area. 
This contrasts with the most accepted hypothesis of DM homology that consider DM to be a region homogeneous along the rostrocaudal axis and that is equivalent to the amygdala. So uh, the, here what we see is like two slides, no? Of two... Um, yeah, if we cut the brain like this, then we get the sections, no? Two sections. And we see that, yeah, it's this hemisphere. So what here we see uh, that DM along the rostrocaudal axis uh, in both models is an uh, homogeneous region. Uh, yeah, here we see the brain on the top and here the two sections. However, what we have seen uh, is that we have demonstrated that the end contains functionally different areas from which possibly one rostral DM could be actually homologous to the amygdala, but at least another one is related to another functions. But back to the issue of pain in fish, our results show that the mechanisms that support pain, proce pain processing could have appeared earlier than previously thought in the vertebrates evolution, having long preceded the mammal's radiation. And if we take into account that the only common ancestor of teleost fish and mammals is the common ancestor of all uh, vertebrates, it's yeah, it's a very uh, old ancestor of all vertebrates. It is plausible that pain was present since the dawn of vertebrae of the vertebrae. Vertebrae. <laughs> so uh, that was all. Thank you for your attention, and hopefully, we don't have to use this video, and we can, or we can pass to the questions. Thank you very much.